Welcome to our Parent University Workshop on Schoolhouse.World. My name is Chris Steinhauser and I'm the Superintendent of Schools for the Long Beach Unified School District. Before I introduce our presenters, I'd like to take this opportunity to remind all of our viewers that if you have questions for our presenters, please write them in the comments section and they will be answered throughout our presentation. For many years, the Long Beach Unified School District has had a great partnership with the Khan Academy. Our students use the Khan Academy on a regular basis to improve their math skills and, and, and many other subjects as well. In fact, the majority of our students in grades six through 12 use the Khan Academy on a regular basis. When our school started distance learning, Saul Khan called me to share an idea he had to support our students. He said, Chris, wouldn't it be wonderful if students who were struggling with a concept could have a live tutor via the internet. And when we presented this idea to our teachers, we had over 40 teachers in the Long Beach Unified School District volunteer for this program. Thus, Schoolhouse.World pilot was born. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our presenters, Saul Khan of the Khan Academy and Leo Ramos of the Long, Lee, excuse me, Leo Ramos of the Long Beach Unified School District. Go ahead. Thanks, thanks so much, Chris. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll give kind of the history, the genesis of schoolhouse.world, and then I'll hand it over to everyone else uh, because the district has already been doing, you know, really amazing, I would say, innovation and entrepreneurship at a kind of a world-class level, uh, kind of taking some of these ideas and running with it. So, you know, many people are familiar with Khan Academy. Khan Academy is a not-for-profit with a mission of providing a free world-class education for anyone, anywhere. It started, for those of y'all who don't know, you know, back in 2004, uh, my original background was in technology. Then I found myself working in finance and just, you know, out of, after my wedding, my family was visiting me from New Orleans and in Boston at the time. And it came out of conversation. My 12 year old cousin Nadia was having trouble with math and I offered to tutor her remotely. Uh, and, you know, if that was in 2004, this the whole notion of tutoring people remotely has taken on completely new meaning now. Uh, but I was tutoring her. Uh, so I said, hey, when you go back to New Orleans, I'll, I'll tutor remotely. She agreed. Long story short, she got caught up with her class. She even got a little ahead of her class. Word spread around her family, around my family, that free tutoring was going on. And so then I found myself tutoring many cousins. And I started making things, I started making resources for them, software, so they could learn at their own time and pace, so that I, as their tutor, their teacher, could understand where their gaps were, so that I could dig in a little bit deeper when we got on the phone. Uh, I started uh, making videos uh, to explain things that they could pause and repeat at their, at their own time and place. And one thing led to another, um, had trouble focusing on my day job at some point. There were many tens of thousands of people using it. And so in 2009, set up Khan Academy as a not-for-profit. Uh, and uh, you know, that was the beginning. And since then, we've primarily through philanthropic support, we got to a point where students can learn from you know elementary level to middle school to high school, even early college level math, science. We've just launched some language arts materials. And that's essentially asynchronous learning. You can learn at your own time and pace. Ideally, it's done in conjunction with amazing teachers. And we have a lot of work in Long Beach where, you know, Long Beach has really pioneered a lot of the work at Khan Academy, especially at the high school level with our SAT practice. We're the official practice for the SAT uh, and in and many of the high school uh, science and, and math courses. But there's always been even one dream further than, than Khan Academy, which is, you know, I wrote a book uh, eight years ago called One World Schoolhouse. And the reason why I called it that is I imagined a somewhat utopian state where not only could you get help from something like Khan Academy, not only could that be integrated with a classroom and about half of our usage is in classrooms, but what if we had a world where at any point, if a student has trouble with something, they could click a button and there'd be an amazing teacher who's running a session on that, maybe with a few other students, so they can get that help. So it's great if Khan Academy, that they're getting the practice, maybe the video helps, maybe the explanations help, but there's nothing like an incredible teacher to really get kids through those gaps and frankly, to motivate them. And so, you know, that was always this kind of far off dream. And then when uh, the COVID crisis hit and it was clear that um, th there was a need for something like this and the need isn't five years in the future, the need is essentially yesterday. Uh, I, I started, this is actually more of a Sal project. It's very uh, complementary to Khan Academy and it might, these projects might merge at some point. Uh, but I started talking to friends, you know, engineers. I was like, you know, someone's got to build this. I want to work on this. And then I was able to find some amazing volunteers uh, to work on this. In particular, a friend of mine, Shashir, who runs a company called Coda. He was able to put some resources. I've got connected with actually a family, the Olson family, that has been able to help us out here. And we said, okay, we think we can build a platform. We'll call it schoolhouse.world. The domain name was available, uh, where 
uh, students can, based on the Khan Academy taxonomy of math, they can say, you know what, I need, I need help in unit three of algebra one. Uh, and they can express their interest and then the teachers could see where there's demand and then they can offer uh, uh, video conferencing tutorials, classes on that topic. And then students could immediately say, oh, I, yeah, that looks like what I would like. And then they could attend it. And so one of the early questions we had is, okay, we think we can build this, but can we work with a really, you know, uh, a fast moving, innovative school district? And when they said that, I was like, I know the school district, I'm gonna call uh, Chris and see if he's interested in this. And it was one of these, you know, I think, I think we had each other at hello, <laughs> um, because it immediately started, we started realizing that there's something powerful about doing it at a school district level, because there obviously safety is a concern. We can be utopian that everyone's going to help each other, but in the wide world, you could be afraid, especially in a video conferencing modality. But what if the teachers were real teachers and the students were real students and they, they, we could authenticate that thing. And so that's the genesis of it. And so over the last, I think that was almost six weeks ago that we had that conversation. We've been moving in kind of record speed uh, to, we've been working closely with the Long Beach teachers and faculty and administration to think about how could this work? What would the features be there? This volunteer team has been really doing an amazing job from CODA and the schoolhouse.world, Mariah, uh, putting this together. And so we've been doing the initial pilots really over the last uh, week, week and a half, uh, where we're uh, some amazing, you know, they're calling the first 50 teachers have stepped up to want to do this. And uh, we want to make sure that the parent community is aware of this resource. Uh, because I think this could be not only a really valuable way for students to get help, uh, but it's going to be an archetype for, I think, uh, what, what could serve a lot of people in the future. So I'll stop talking uh, and I'll hand, hand over the mic. Thank you, Sal and Chris. Uh, again, my name is Leo Ramos and I, I am actually the uh, implementation lead for our district. So um, for this new and exciting project that Sal and Chris were talking about. So I wanted to, uh, today, kind of my primary goal is to uh, show you what the possibilities are and show you how you can actually access it as a student and for parents to see what it's available. So I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen so you guys can see what that would look like. And right now I'm actually just using um, a Google page so you can see how I can start from there. And I'm going to go to our district website and I'm going to type just lbschools.net. Once there, I know I can click on that Long Beach Unified School District. And for today's purposes, I wanted to show you how it looked like as a student. So I'm gonna go in to the student portal. So you'll notice here on the top, there's a section for students. When I click on it, the second one down, it says student LBUSD portal. So I wanna go ahead and click there, which takes me to my login. And for students, um, a lot of them um, already are very much used to this because they have to use it for their uh, current classes. I'm gonna go ahead and type in my credentials there. What you see here is what a typical um, student portal looks like. Mine has different tiles. You'll notice that um, over here, I have just the ones that I've recently accessed and I have some of the favorite ones that I like to use. For students, when they first log in into their portal, they might not see some of these. So we wanted to take a little bit of time today to kind of show you how they can actually access. And the main one that we wanted to highlight today was the schoolhouse.world. So you can see it looks like this. If they don't see it, or if you're a student and you're watching this right now, if you don't see this tile when you log into your portal, what you want to do is go up here to the magnifying glass and you can type in just the world school. You'll notice that any tile that has that word, which will show up. And I'll notice that the first one on the left here is schoolhouse.world. When you click on it, this will then take you to the website, schoolhouse.world website for our district. And one of the nice things is since you already logged into the portal, it's single sign on and kids are automatically logged in here. You'll notice that you, it takes you right to the welcome page. And if I scroll down, there's a nice video there from Sal himself, welcoming to welcoming all students to the platform and kind of giving them a brief overview of what they can expect. Uh, if I keep scrolling down, you'll see there's a getting started. This um, part kind of um, helps those of, those of you that haven't uh, used this platform before, just get a general idea of what's there. So you'll notice that it says sessions by topic, sessions by teacher, my sessions and following, and it gives a very brief explanation of what each one of those is. So today I wanted to kind of highlight some of those for you today and show you what it's like. So the first one, Sessions by Topic, I can either access it here on this link, or you'll notice that at the top, I also have those same titles up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Sessions by Topic. 
And you'll notice that once I click on this page, I have a new screen that shows me uh, some of the different uh, things that I can choose. I have one that's called orientation. So if I am a student that needs help, just how to uh, sign up for a session. If I'm not sure how I can uh, look up uh, different topics that are available, look up what teachers are currently teaching. If I wanna learn about uh, upcoming sessions, I can simply look here and see if there's any classes being offered. Or I can also follow that topic, which will then let me know and send me a notification when there's uh, sessions that are available. And we'll talk a little bit more about how they can see the classes and follow in a second. We wanted to show you for middle school and high school what they can see. So if I am a middle school student, for example, I can click here on the drop down. And you'll notice that I have sixth grade, seventh, eighth, algebra, and functional math. So if, uh, for example, my daughter is in sixth grade right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on sixth grade just so you can see a general idea. And I know um, you'll notice that once I click on it, I have different topics that show up based on uh, what's uh, taught in sixth grade and based on those con taxonomies as well. Uh, for my daughter, I know she's doing a lot of uh, work with data. So if I keep scrolling down, I should be able to see that uh, title here. So if I scroll down, variables and expressions, equations and inequalities, geometry, and here we go, data and statistics. So if some of these um, topics sound familiar, so like mean and median, I know she had uh, some assignments a couple of days ago on that. And, and uh, if there's anything in here that sounds uh, familiar to me, I might uh, want to explore to see what's available. So you'll notice to the right of it, there's a couple of buttons. There's C classes and there's telling me that there's three classes right now. So I can go ahead and click on that to see what's available. You'll notice that it tells me there's one class called data and statistics and it tells me the teacher's name and the time. So on the 14th at 11 a.m. And there's a brief explanation of what's gonna be covered in that session. If this was something that interests me and I was available at this time, I can just simply click on register and be able to uh, uh, attend this session at that time. You'll notice there's a couple other uh, teachers that are also offering sessions that deal with this topic of data and statistics. If uh, for some reason this times do not uh, work for me or perhaps the topics that I see in the descriptions are not something that I'm currently interested in, I can simply click on follow as well. And that does a couple of things. One, it lets uh, teachers that are part of this program know that, oh, there's students that are interested in data and statistics. Perhaps there, since there's a big demand for these sessions, perhaps we can uh, create more sessions for them and be able to uh, share the content with them. The second thing that it does, it also uh, will notify me as a student when these sessions are now available. So if a teacher goes in the schoolhouse.org website and schedules a session, I will then um, be notified uh, in a couple of ways to let me know that, hey, you might wanna check this out. There's a new session being offered. And once I click, I can find that information here as well. Um, I wanted to take a little bit of time too to show you how that would look like when I'm actually registering for a session. Um, you'll notice that down here, I have high school math. And for those of you that, are, uh, that have either high school students or you're our high school student yourself, you'll see that you have your algebra one, algebra two, geometry, pre-calculus, stats, AP Stats, AP Calculus, AP Calculus B and C, as well as Functional Mathematics. So those are also um, uh, courses that are available and each one, just like we did with middle school, when you drop, when you uh, click on the, it tells you the different topics that are available, works the exact same way. So for our demo today, I wanted to just briefly highlight how I can join one session and I'm gonna pick the orientation one, which is the one if you need additional support uh, with the, the Schoolhouse uh, dot world site itself. I'm going to click on C classes. And I noticed that uh, there's a couple one is uh, myself that I uh, actually have scheduled a few sessions, but I noticed there's one here on uh, Saturday at 10 a.m. that actually works for me and I'm able to attend it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on register. Now I mentioned earlier that uh, you uh, receive notifications from schoolhouse.world once you, uh, you uh, follow a topic. The nice thing is you also get notifications when you register for courses. So I wanted to show you what that looks like as far as uh, for students. So I registered and I'm wondering, okay, what happened? How do I actually join this session? Okay, so I wanted to show you a couple of ways. First is I'm gonna click back into my portal and you'll notice that in my portal, I have the Outlook um, webmail um, tile there. If I don't have that tile, same thing that I did with schoolhouse.world, I can actually look for it. So I'm gonna click on that magnifying glass and click on Outlook. And here's that tile. You'll notice that when I click on it, 
now I have, oh, there's, there's my, uh, my email that says you signed up and I'm going to click on it. You've signed up for a session schoolhouse.world toured on Saturday, May 16th. So that uh, session that I just signed up for, I now have a confirmation email that I've signed up for that. And uh, when it gets closer to the session itself, I'm also going to receive an email letting me, uh, providing me with the link to the session as well as additional information. So you'll notice there's actually a link here. So Google Meet Etiquette Guide to kind of help me kind of what to expect when I'm joining this virtual conference. So that's kind of how it works if I'm using the uh, Outlook email. But there's also another way. I can also um, look for the notification in my calendar. So you'll notice that in my student portal, I have a tile for Google Calendar. Same idea. If I don't have that tile as a student, I can simply search for it by either typing Google or typing in calendar on the search. So you'll notice that as, as I'm um, populating Google, I have all the different uh, tiles that are available. And here's Google Calendar. When I click on it right now, it's for Wednesday. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Saturday, which is for the session that I scheduled. And you'll notice that I now have an event there. And it's, uh, it's not filled in because I haven't accepted it yet in my calendar. When I click on it, it's letting me know that there's a, a session happening Saturday, May 16th. And let me make this slightly bigger. There we go. Um, and it also has the information that the teacher provided for me, as well as the link. OK. Um, those are just two ways that I can get notifications. And for example, one um, additional bonus, and I, I believe uh, Sal mentioned this uh, uh, earlier as far as the, the privacy and the protections. One of the nice features about doing this only within our district first is you'll notice that when I click on this link as a student, you'll notice that the first part, oh, here we go, allow, now. You notice that the first part in here, it won't let me join yet because there's no teacher there. So as soon as I click on the link, it will say I'm not able to join. But in a minute, I'm going to ask uh, one of our colleagues uh, who's uh, helping us do the demo to make sure she logs in so she can uh, uh, kind of uh, show you guys what it would look like as a, as a teacher once a teacher joins us. So if, if a student is clicking and they're letting you know, hey, my, my uh, link is not working, just uh, be aware that this is for a reason, for a safety reasons, it's protected within our domain. And so when students are clicking and there's no teacher uh, that's present, it will give them an error message and they will not be able to join the Google Meet until the teacher actually logs in. And in, in mine, it kind of makes sense, right? It's happening at 10 o'clock on Saturday. So I should not be able to click uh, on that Meet and join it because there should probably not be anyone else in there. And once uh, I click on it again, let's see if uh, our teacher is there now waiting for us to make sure that I can log in. There we go. There's my teacher. She's there. Once I click join now, and now I should be able to be able to log in. And you'll notice she's there. She's already happy. She's got her whiteboard ready. She's got my problem to solve. I really, I'm not sure if I want to stay here and solve it yet because I might uh, get the answer wrong. Just kidding, Wendy. I know you taught me well from our last session. So there's my solve two x plus ten equals three x minus one. So just thank you, Wendy, for uh, sharing that. I'm gonna uh, click out of this meet for right now just so that we don't have two meets going on and uh, added uh, bandwidth. But one of the nice things that you'll notice that with uh, that particular meet is it could be a very big, it could, uh, the range of the particular sessions could be uh, varied. It could be a teacher just holding the whiteboard like Wendy was doing and kind of guiding us through a problem. Um, we've gone to many of these sessions that have already been happening and the best part of them has, has been kind of seeing kids uh, work through problems with and getting that additional support from teachers that connection that they get when they're getting additional assistance is so much greater than when they're just trying to listen to a video or when they're just trying to work through a problem on their own so you'll notice in that particular uh example we just had a whiteboard there's teachers that are also using different apps they might be using an ipad they might be using another uh, tool like a, a document camera and in, it depends on their use so if there's teachers that are teaching uh, calculus and higher levels, they might need other tools that they're using to demo their lesson. So depending on the need and the content that they're teaching, the teacher's use of the different devices or technology will vary. But the basic idea is I want to help kids get unstuck or I want to help kids who are having a slight difficulty in a problem and they just need additional support from me. So that's kind of the basic idea of those sessions. Um, talk just a little bit about uh, the notifications through uh, mail and the notifications through calendar. I also wanted to point out that for kids, if 
they simply wanted to attend the sessions within the schoolhouse.world website. There's also a tab called My Sessions. And you'll notice that when I click on it, I'm able to go ahead and from there go to any session that I've currently registered for. So those are just some of the basic features of the site so far. I wanted to um, feel like uh, I've explained just a little bit of the website already. There's a few more pieces that I want to cover, but I wanted to uh, pause briefly just to make sure that there's if there's any to see if there's any questions that I might need uh, to answer if there's any part that wasn't clear. So I wanted to uh, hand it over to uh, Becky just to see if there's any questions on the chat that are currently arising. Hi, Leo. I'm Rebecca from Parent University. And so far, we don't have any questions. You've been explaining it so well. I think that uh, I think the questions that parents are asking uh, are being answered. So uh, thank you, Mr. Ramos, for checking in with us. But so far, the question board is, is uh, silent. So parents, if you have questions, please feel, feel, to, uh, feel free to drop them into our comments section on YouTube. We're here to help out. So back to you, I guess, Leo. That's great to hear. Well. <laughs> We do have uh, another time throughout the presentation that I'll pause again and ask if there's any questions. And maybe once I cover some of the other content on the website, some of those questions will arise. But primarily right now, we wanna make sure that you, especially if you're a student watching this, that you understand that this is available to you and that you can log into it by just going into a tile in your portal. And that you also have other tools available for you that you might not even be aware of, right? You might not even, uh, realize, hey, I actually have a tile for my Google Calendar there, and I can be notified of any um, uh, Google Classroom assignments that my teachers are posting, as well as any uh, schoolhouse.world uh, sessions that I'm signing up for. It's not just the, my Google Calendar. is not just for the purpose of schoolhouse.world, but I can use it for other things as well that are, are being used in our district. And I didn't even know I might have uh, uh, Outlook as a possible email. So a lot of students my, this might be the first time that they're hearing that. And now they're, they're thinking, oh, now I know where all my notifications are going when my teacher's uh, posting a grade in my Google Classroom or where my, my teacher's giving me feedback. And now I know that I also can get uh, notifications there when um, I sign up for a session or when it's about a half an hour before my session, I know I can go to my Outlook mail and I'll be able to uh, go ahead and join the session from there. And again, that's gonna be in your portal. And if you, if you don't see the tiles there, you can go ahead and click on that magnifying glass and type it away, Outlook for your mail or calendar for your calendar. And if you're looking for your schoolhouse.world tile, that would be just typing in school. And you'll also, well, one uh, slightly uh, uh, different idea that I would recommend for you if you're uh, a student watching this is, you notice that on mine, I have some tiles that I have as favorites. So those are kind of easy access for me. So you'll notice that if there's anything, so here's my big ideas uh, learning, uh, Tile. So if I need, if I, this is a tile that I use quite a bit, I can click on it, right click on it, and you'll notice that there's an option to, that says add to favorites. So now anytime I log into my portal, these tiles that I've decided those are the ones that I use the most are showing up for me down here and it's easy for me to find it. I don't have to uh, uh, search for it using the toolbar anymore. I can simply just go to my favorites and access them this way. And the nice feature for a lot of these is that it's, since you've already signed into your portal, it will immediately take you into the, the tiles itself and to use these platforms as well. So those are some of the nice things that you already have in your um, student portal that you might not even be aware of just yet. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click back on our uh, website so you can see some of the other features. We talked about just finding sessions by a topic, which is the one that a lot of you might be using. There's also a tab called sessions by teacher. So if I click on that, you'll notice that I have a list of all the teachers that are currently a part of this program. So it's quite a, a long list so far. We have about 50 teachers that are currently in here. You'll see some names that might look familiar to some of you. You even, you'll even see Mr. Khan himself down here as well. And next to them, you'll see that there's, uh, if there are any classes that they're offered, there's the option to just click on that bo the button there and see uh, when that session is being offered. So I'm gonna go ahead and click up here, just slightly go up, 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 there we go. And you'll notice that here is Mr. Uh, Sal himself. You'll notice right now the button is not there for me to see if I can register for some of his classes. But what I can do is I can just click down here on the right and click on follow. And I mentioned this to you guys earlier, now that I'm following him, anytime Sal decides, okay, I feel like there's a big, huge demand for 
kids that need help with uh, data and his statistics. Let me go ahead and schedule a session for that. And as soon as he schedules a session, then you'll get a notification in your um, Outlook mail letting you know, hey, there's a session that's being uh, offered. You might want to check it out. So that's another bonus of having it, uh, having you follow um, topics this way or following teachers this way. And you'll notice that as soon as I click on follow, when I go down here to the more, there's a section that says following. And what that displays is any topic. So you notice that earlier I um, said that I wanted to follow the topic of data and statistics for sixth grade, since my daughter is actually covering that right now. And I also clicked on follow for teachers, right? So anytime in either one of those, there's a new session for it. Now I'm going to go ahead and get notified about it. So that's kind of the nice feature that the website has of letting me know when sessions are being offered or when there's things that are available to me. Um, some of the other uh, features to point out, you'll notice that anytime that I sign up, and we did uh, look at this tab a little bit earlier, but just let me just highlight some of the other uh, things on here. You'll notice that the sessions that I register for are here, as well as sessions that I've already attended. There's a little button that allows me to provide feedback. So this was a teacher that I really enjoyed, and it was a great lesson, and he or she really helped me solve a problem, and they get, helped me get unstuck when uh, what I was having challenges with. I can provide that feedback here for them. And you'll notice that if I keep scrolling down, here's my, my student calendar as well. So this isn't your Google calendar that we uh, shared with you earlier, but this is just your calendar for sessions that you register for in schoolhouse.world. So you'll notice that in my student calendar, I have sessions that I've attended prior to today, as well as any session that I've currently uh, I'm planning on attending. So on the 15th, I'm planning on attending quadratic functions and equations. Um, Stacy, I'll be there. And then on the 16th is the session that I just uh, registered for uh, with Wendy. Um, so those are some of just some of the, the features of the My Sessions uh, uh, tab. And there's also one additional tab that I wanted to highlight. So down here where it says Help, if um, there's things that you still are not sure of, uh, there might not be an orientation uh, happening at the moment when you are logging into the site, but you're just not sure about some of the different things. Looking through some of the frequently asked questions might help you. So if you're not sure what sessions you would sign up for, there's some um, information there. There's information on how to follow a teacher or a topic. So you can see there's different things that you can get help on. So how do I join a session? There's a brief explanation how to do that. How do I use Google Meet for my session? You'll notice there's actually um, information here about uh, using it. There's how do I know when a specific teacher is offering sessions? And this is the idea of there's a teacher that I really connected with. I want to make sure that I know when they're offering sessions again. So I want to make sure that I follow that teacher so that I get notified. So we talked a little bit about that earlier. So this page might be useful for those of you that just need additional support. And again, if it's not covered here, we encourage you to just simply click on the orientation page. So the sessions by topic and see what classes are being offered. So we're more than uh, happy to help you out if there's things that you're, you're not finding in the site or if there's suggestions that you have that of uh, topics that are not currently being covered, we'll be happy to help you out during the orientation and do some, some of these classes. And they're very short, just like your lessons are. So as, as, as long as you guys uh, sign up here, you'll get notification that, hey, this uh, orientation session is being offered during the, the time that it's available. And hopefully I'll be able to uh, have more students join us in some of these orientations and be able to help more. Um, we talked a, a lot about with our training team that some of the, the greatest parts of, of this uh, platform is seeing the teachers that have already offered sessions and the teachers that have already connected with a lot of students. And just, uh, I'm a former elementary teacher myself and I've really connected with them when they talk about the idea of helping that student to the light bulb went on during the session and they said, oh, now I get it. So for us as teachers, we're uh, super excited to be offering this new platform and, and super excited to be able to connect with more students that are not just the ones that uh, we help in our own classrooms, but all the ones that we help throughout the district. So this platform allows us to do that. So that's one of the biggest exciting things about this. Um, for now, I've covered kind of the basics for the platform is for itself. It's pretty uh, basic. Before I show you kind of what uh, what it does in the teacher side and what the teacher platform kind of looks like, just so you can see as 
when when kids are jumping in here and 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 clicking on follow what does does in the teacher side i wanted to briefly stop one more time just to make sure that there are no uh questions that i haven't addressed yet or if there's any parents that have um additional comments or questions that we would like to point out so uh, rebecca if there's anything that has been asked in the chat that i haven't covered yet please let me know hi leo we do have a couple of questions and so let me uh let me click over and bring them to you uh the first question we had is um are these going to be teaching sessions or tutoring sessions a lot of parents have asked is this teaching or tutoring so the the basic idea is they're and they're called sessions and uh primarily for a reason they're they're meant to get kids unstuck when they're they're having trouble um figuring out a problem so it could be considered tutoring for some people but they're meant for i need to just help on figuring out how to solve equations and here's a teacher providing uh content for that so i'm gonna uh he or she might have already provided me some pre-work and you'll notice that with some of the sessions i'm gonna go ahead and click on it now with some of the sessions and that was my uh Outlook mail letting me know there's a notification. So I'm going to uh, uh, pause for a second and make sure I click out of that so you guys are not getting the multiple notifications. But um, you'll notice that when I look at some of the sessions, and let me uh, go ahead and go here to middle school math, you'll notice that some of the teachers will actually have things that I can do uh, prior to the session, right? So there's actually, uh, they might uh, tell me, hey, you might consider going to this site for Khan Academy, since this is related to the Khan Academy taxonomies, and do some of this work. If you are uh, getting stuck with ratios, rates, and percentages, you might consider use, doing this uh, first. And when you come to our session, you might have some of those uh, same uh, concepts being explored even further, right? So uh, the idea of tutoring uh, sessions, it's it, this is a platform that will be used in many different ways. And I know the, the teachers that we currently have, one of the exciting things that are innovative teachers that will use this to help more kids than just the ones in their own classrooms. And so they'll, they'll, they'll be providing even more feedback than what I'm mentioning now as to where this could uh, lead to. Okay. Um, we had another question about other subjects. So will mm -hmm. other subjects be available um, at any time besides the math? We have that Good. a couple of times as well. Yes, so um, the primarily we started with uh, grades six through 12 and primarily because of that connection that we already have with Khan Academy and the Khan Academy taxonomies, it lend itself very nicely to it. The, as we're growing and as we're expanding, as we're already using the site so much, the, the, there will be uh, additional content areas as well as we're rolling it out with upper elementary, hopefully in very, very soon. And so, other grade levels will uh, be exposed to them with uh, math content, and we're hoping to expand to other areas like social studies, science, and so forth. So yes, those are definitely things that we are looking at and are actually planning as we speak. Okay. Um, another question parents ask is, will this be available all year round? Is it just during the school session? Will it be available during summer? So that that's a good question, and that might... Uh, uh, Defer to that one as far as this the the platform itself is is there's no mandate for teachers so this is voluntary for teachers to actually join this okay. and they're able to schedule sessions when they they prefer so if I am a teacher I can decide I might do a, a session when I'm actually teaching my own students right so I teach my students from 10 to 11 every day and I teach them math that during that time. So instead of just teaching my own class, now I'm gonna expand it a little bit more and invite other kids uh, from the district at that time. The same way I can also expand and say, you know what, uh, I actually wanna, uh, I don't wanna just focus on algebra one, which is the content that I might be teaching, but I wanna uh, teach other subjects that I'm very familiar with and that I enjoy teaching. So I might uh, offer some of the sessions at a different time throughout the day or a different, uh, um, date. So you notice that Wendy actually even offered hers on, on Saturday. So there's no, uh, there's no mandate and it's all voluntary for teachers as well as for students. So depending on, on the teachers and when they're available and when they're able to schedule some of these sessions, that's when, um, that's when they'll be available. Okay, great. A couple more questions. Um, um, is this going to be available for students, um, special education students, students who are in the SDC classroom? Is this available for them as well? 
Yes. So you'll notice that um, that that is definitely one area that we we wanted to uh, definitely address. And there's actually uh, teachers that are currently in in the program that do teach students with special needs as well. And you'll notice there's actually a functional math uh, content in here. And you'll notice that there's classes that are going to uh, hopefully be offered in the near future that uh, for kids that may need uh, the additional support. Um, this has been a topic that we've actually involved several people. So even uh, our curriculum leader that works for the special education department has been involved and we're planning together to make, make sure that we adhere to what we all do in Long Beach, which is the all means all uh, uh, saying. So we wanna make sure that for this new platform, we're taking that into consideration as well. So you'll notice that the functional math is one initial steps to get us there, but we're constantly uh, looking and getting feedback from teachers as to how and how we're going to uh, support all of our students, not just the, the, the ones that are, are taking Algebra 1 or the ones that are taking uh, calculus and stats classes, but all of our students. Perfect. And then there was a request, uh, request, Mr. Ramos, if you could just review one more time how students can access Schoolhouse World. So if you could review one more time how to access through the student portal. I will be happy to, yes. Thanks. I'm going to uh, actually simply click out on a new tab just to show you from the beginning, right? And in here, I'm just going to go to Google, which many of us might be used to, and simply search for our district. I'm going to type it in the address bar this time, lbschools.net, right? So here's my lbschools.net at the top. This takes me to our district website. And you'll notice that here, I have the different tabs at the top, right? Where there's AZ index, about, office, the schools. There's one that's specifically for students. And when they click on it, there's the second one down says student LBUSD portal. This is the one where the, they'll go to be able to access the platform. Once here is where we recommend that if they don't see the tile, which for um, the majority of them, they will not see it just yet because they haven't used it yet, right? So the first time they log in or trying to find it, we encourage them to look, use the magnifying glass here and search for that application by just typing in the word school. I'm gonna go ahead and type in school and you'll notice that schoolhouse.world the tile shows up here on the left and when I click on it that's where it takes me to our actual platform okay and they'll take you right to here to the welcome page and using that same um, idea is, is what we encourage you uh, your students as well to find their google calendar as well as their outlook mail for the notification so that portal is is uh, the biggest factor in, in all of this because when we were designing this uh, platform, one of the key features is we wanted that to be, that for safety reasons, we wanted kids to be able to just simply find it easily in their portal, being able to, as soon as they log in with their uh, Long Beach mm -hmm. credentials, they're able to click on the tile, find the platform, and they don't have to go to uh, three different places to find it. It's all gonna be housed in their student portal. Awesome. Those are all the questions we have. We've been trying to answer the questions. Um, a lot of as they're coming through the comments, we have a team of math experts and a team of Schoolhouse World teachers that have been answering the questions they've been coming through. But those were some of the big questions that we wanted to, to put out there to, um, to you. So thank you, Mr. Ramos, for taking oh, you're the welcome. time. You're welcome. Um, it looks like um, that uh, one more question is about who are the teachers that are on Schoolhouse World? Is it just teachers at my school that I can access or can I access other teachers as well? That one just came through. Okay, good. So uh, currently when you go to sessions by teacher, you can see all the teachers that are currently um, able to use this platform. So it's teachers throughout the district. And specifically when uh, teachers um, were being considered for this program, we looked at the possibility of having teachers from multiple, uh, who could offer multiple classes. So we didn't want just teachers who, uh, from elementary or teachers who are just specifically from high school. So we wanted to make sure that there's a wide range here so that uh, if a student is from uh, middle school, they're able to find at least uh, a few teachers that teach that content. If there's kids that need uh, additional support with stats or kids that need additional support with algebra one, there are teachers that will be able to uh, provide support with that. So you'll notice that as I scroll down, you see a list of all the teachers and from all, uh, parts of our district and from many different schools throughout the di district. And um, many of them um, kind of provided a um, brief bio that kind of lets you know a little bit more about the content that they teach, as well as uh, some of their uh, uh, excitement about working with different teachers throughout. 
So you'll notice that it's actually even uh, some of our curriculum um, leaders are part of this program. So for example, Michelle Torres here, she's part of our implementation team and she's a K-5 math coach. So if I'm an uh, elementary student that uh, is uh, trying to use this platform, she might be a person I consider here clicking here and following because she might be offering some sessions uh, soon that have, pertain to uh, upper elementary or maybe some sixth grade uh, courses. So if I keep scrolling down, you'll notice there's uh, some of these teachers' names might look familiar to many of you. And again, if especially if you see your, uh, for students that are, are part of our webinar today, if you see your own teacher here, one uh, thing that I would definitely encourage you to do is click on follow your, your own teacher. So that way you can uh, get notified anytime your, your, your teacher is providing uh, sessions. And then uh, making sure that you, you check out some of the other uh, teachers and some of the other topics that are being offered. So if there, in case there's something that you're still not uh, familiar with or still there's something, a topic that you wanna explore a little bit more and you wanna uh, uh, get a perspective from another teacher, then uh, we encourage you to look to the sessions by topic as well to see what else is out there. Perfect. I did, I did want to take just a couple of minutes just to show you briefly. They, they won't see the, the teacher um, website, but I wanted them to see that. Um, and I'm hoping that you guys can see the, the screen right now that has the teacher uh, website. Please let me know. Uh, Rebecca, if you can see the, the teacher one real quick, because mm -hmm. it's a different, it's, it's, I'm, using a different screen. So hopefully it's, it'll say at the top LBUSD teachers. But what I, the, the part that I wanted to highlight here is that when teachers are designing the, or deciding what uh, courses to uh, schedule, you'll notice that there's a demand level. And I'm just want to make sure, can you guys see this, this screen okay right now? Uh, Rebecca, we, still, we still see the, the classes. We're not okay. seeing your teacher screen quite okay, yet. So let me, let me, let me go ahead and, and share that part of it. Thank you for letting me know. I was, I was, uh, Slightly worried that that's not the, the screen, but let me go ahead and share that one real quick. So you'll notice this one is what it looks like for the teachers that are part of the program. And earlier when I talked a little bit about following, I mentioned that it did a couple of things. One, it gave me a notification as a student as to when these sessions were being offered. But the second part uh, that's also important when whenever a student yeah, clicks on follow. <laughs> What's that? Sorry. Um, no, it's okay. Whenever a student clicks on follow, um, it also uh, adds to the demand level. So you'll notice down here, if I'm a teacher, when I click on sixth grade, I can see what students are actually asking for. So for ratios, rates, and percentages, there's three um, dots there or three squares there letting me know if I, data and statistics is getting a little bit uh, bigger. And I can uh, keep going through the different grade levels and see where the demand is and decide, okay, this is a content that I'm very familiar with. This is content that uh, I am um, I really would like to teach, I can go ahead and schedule a session. And for the students that actually clicked on that follow, then they're gonna get a notification saying, hey, guess what? Now there's a session available for data and statistics and there's um, different times that may actually work for your schedule now. So that was one part that I wanted to share with you as far as what it looks like for the teachers that are part of the program and how uh, the students are actually uh, helping us decide what content to offer and helping us drive the demand level and sessions available. Okay. If parents or students have more questions about how to use Schoolhouse World, where can they go or what, is there a resource for them? Yeah, so in- Beyond this video. Yeah, so in, uh, I noticed that in uh, the actual YouTube channel, there's, there's three, um, links for them. So one was the presentation in Spanish, one was in English and also in Khmer. In the, and I, I can actually go through what's included in the presentation as well. But the last slide of the presentation has my information as well as additional support. So the link at the bottom that says parent helplines and technical support. So if you're struggling with um, the remembering your student ID or how to log into the, the your student portal, if you're struggling with a Chromebook or accessing the different sites, the parent helpline and technical support might be a resource for you. If you just need additional support with just the schoolhouse.world site itself, then here's my email as well. If, the, if, um, if that was the case and you needed additional uh, help or additional support, I'd be more than happy to help in that way. And to briefly show you too, the, the presentation itself, let me go, go back to the top. You'll notice that it has um, for, uh, 
for those of you that are clicking on the links for the presentation, it has a sales video kind of introducing the concept of a schoolhouse of world. And uh, he, he addresses students himself and Long Beach students and kind of uh, thanking them for being a part of this. He also talks about the idea of what um, some of you uh, asked earlier, the idea of these are uh, not really uh, formal lessons that you would see in a classroom from, from teachers, but they're more like sessions, right? Where there's students that are the ones that are kind of driving it and they're the ones that are letting us know Hey, I need additional support with this. And can you just help me get unstuck and help me uh, uh, work through these problems? And that we, what we talked about earlier when we went into uh, the session uh, with uh, my teacher, Wendy, and how she just had a whiteboard. So the session itself could be very low tech and it could just be um, somebody or a teacher guiding you through a problem and helping you think through it so that you're able to do it the next time you face a similar problem. Um, the presentation itself also has the student video. This uh, video itself is about three minutes and actually 3.14 on purpose. For those of you math teachers out there that are watching this, 3.14, we did it pies just to uh, make sure uh, that uh, all of us that love math would be happy with this. Uh, so this particular video uh, helps uh, students uh, figure out some of the things that we talked today, how to log in to um, uh, using the tile on their portal, how to find sessions by topic, how to find sessions by uh, a teacher. It also helps them figure out the notifications piece. So whether um, they're getting notified via their Outlook email or they're getting that notification on their Google Calendar, it shows them kind of what uh, we did in today's uh, workshop and um, gives them a, a brief overview of what the website looks like, similar to what we did today. And for those of you that are accessing the the slide deck in Spanish, the video is also in Spanish in that um, in those slides. Um, it talks about how there's a tile in the portal and you, here's uh, that tile magnified. Um, and then uh, sort of the things we did today, which was accessing the platform, finding and registering for a session, how we talked about the notifications and joining it. Um, and then just that last part where I gave you my contact information. Something I didn't uh, cover and I uh, wanted to point out if students are using their mobile device, so many of uh, students are currently using Chromebooks. It works great because uh, Chromebooks uh, uh, automatically take them to their uh, G Suite tool. So they have access to their calendar using their Chromebook. They have access to a lot of the, the tools in G Suite. And uh, those, those students that are not using Chromebooks or not using mobile, uh, not using laptops, it, they can also access the website on their phones and they could also access their notifications on their phone and that video also will guide them through that. So I wanted to make sure I point that out for students that prefer to use their mobile devices, whether it's an iPad, whether it's a, a tablet or their own phones to access this platform or their notifications. Wonderful. Um, a reminder to all parents, too, that this video will be available in a few days on our YouTube page. So if you go to the Parent University playlist, this video, you can rewatch it. Um, it will be available in Spanish and in Kamai. And all of the resources Mr. Roma, Mr. Ramos is talking about are available right underneath the video in additional resources. So everything is, um, you can always go back to it. Okay, Mr. Ramos, that's all the questions we have from here. Well, thank you, and th also thank you to this, the, the parents and students that joined us. I know Dilnari uh, uh, is going to be sharing something with them, but I just wanted to say thank you to Sal for joining us and Mr. Steinhauser for thank you. What an honor. As, as, as well. Uh, uh, Sal, just so you know, my own daughter said she was going to watch this today, but she was going to drop off as soon as you uh, did the introduction. So she did hurt my feelings quite a bit, but <laughs> I, I, under, I, I definitely understood her and, and and honor that. That's better than nothing. My kids don't <laughs> listen to me at all. <laughs> and Dilnari, I know you wanted to mention something to the parents. Yes, thank you. Before we end, I wanted to take a moment and thank Mr. Steinhauser and our presenters, Mr. Khan and Mr. Ramos. Uh, this workshop was a collaboration between the Office of Curriculum, Instruction and Professional Development the Office of Multimedia Services and Parent University. We really enjoyed collaborating with these teams to put this workshop together for you guys. If you know someone that missed the workshop today, please encourage them to check out the district YouTube page. The workshop will be available in English, Spanish, and Khmer. And um, we hope that you will go back and check it out as you explore Schoolhouse World. Our Parent University team, Rebecca Fast, myself, Yolanda Huerta and San Kyo, our parent coordinators, 
are very, very grateful that you joined us today. We know how busy your day can be with school and learning moving to the home. So we're grateful that you spent this time with us to learn about Schoolhouse World. Thank you, have a great afternoon. Thank you.